Every now and then I hear a theist say something which causes my jaw to hit the floor. I was listening to an episode of the Unbelievable podcast in which the Christian author Philip Yancey was describing how his life would be different if he discovered that there was no afterlife or eternal judgment. I don't know much about Philip Yancey other than that he's a rather successful author. Being successful means that a lot of people think that what he has to say has value. As such, I think it's important to say, now hang on a minute, if a person comes out with something outrageous or ridiculous, as I think he has done. Have a listen to this. Frankly, I would rather go through, if there is no reckoning day, if there is no afterlife, I would rather go through life and make all my own decisions. I would rather not care about the poor. I would rather not care about certain things. I would rather just uh, selfishly indulge, as some people do. And uh, those of us who are who are followers of Jesus have concluded, no, that's, that's wrong. And uh, we need to orient ourselves in a completely different way. And one reason we do so is because we believe that this life is, is not all there is. Mr. Yancey said that he would rather not care about the poor. The implication being that he does care about them, but that it is somehow a burden he would like to be relieved of. He then goes on to say that he knows it would be wrong not to care, and cites being a follower of Jesus as a reason for this. According to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 25, verse 36, Jesus, in a roundabout way, describes taking care of the less fortunate as a good thing. This brings up the question, did anyone else promote such altruism before the time of Jesus? How about Confucius? Krishna? How about the author of Psalm 14? Even if Jesus was the first person to have taught such a concept, who's to say that it's right because he taught it, as opposed to him teaching something which happened to be right from the point of view of the society in which he lived? Things were a lot more tribal back then. The idea that strangers on the opposite sides of a spherical planet could have conversations in real time would have been inconceivable at that time. I would argue that you don't have to be a follower of Jesus to understand that selfish behaviour can be detrimental to the well-being of society. Christians often seem to want to ground morality onto something, namely the God they believe is real. But where does that leave us if we haven't first established that the God in question even exists? Believing it and demonstrating it are two separate things. It seems a bit rash to ground our behaviour and morality on something which a significant percentage of the population have no experience or knowledge of. Whereas, everyone knows what it is like to be a human being, living within a human society in a natural world. I can understand why people might postulate an intelligent, supernatural causal agent if they can't conceive of a natural one, but to then go on to claim that such a being is real, and furthermore, to know how it wants us to behave, takes us way beyond the reasonable, in my humble opinion. Daniel Dennett uses the analogy of skyhooks. Why pin your beliefs on the unprovable, when it would be more honest to simply admit that you don't understand the mechanism? Something I've noticed about a lot of believers is that belief in an afterlife and a post-death day of eternal judgment, as alluded to by Yancey, seems to do strange things to their ability to reason. Let me explain. They often say things like, if there's no afterlife, then what's the point of anything at all? As if not living forever should have a negative impact on how we live our lives here and now, during the only life we can all agree is real. I'm sure we can also agree that actions have consequences and that being nice decreases the chances of negative repercussions in our own lives. But many believers seem to think that it's only the concepts of ultimate justice and an eternal afterlife which makes life worth living at all, and also that both of those things are necessary for us to behave ourselves. I'm genuinely baffled by the sheer number of believers who seem to have latched onto this flawed way of thinking. 
analogous in some ways to a computer virus which causes programs to malfunction and sometimes even crashes the whole operating system. So, while I'm perplexed by some of the weirdness which religion seems to introduce to the thinking of its followers, I acknowledge that many of them, including Philip Yancey, are intelligent and kind people. My hope is that these videos help some believers to understand which of their arguments for God are the good ones, and which requires some revision.